Allow me to introduce myself. I am. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Arch Duke. Bishop Dr. Robert L. Maxwell of the Prophetic Record of Arms Ministry, Duke of Pomerania and Livonia, Colonel of the Royal Guard of Pomerania and Livonia, Field Marshal of the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry, and Knight of the Sacred and Military Order of Merits of the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry. And today I'm going to be, we're going to be looking at the subject of water baptism. What does water baptism mean? So without further ado, let's open, we're going to study water baptism. Let's open up with a word of prayer and invite God to guide and lead us. Dear Yahweh Atonai Elohim, we come before you and ask you to anoint, empower, and fill, move us into the apostolic, into the prophetic, empower us to do your will, live your life in and through us, transform and change us, to conform us to the image and likeness of your Son. Make my preaching and teaching acceptable to you. Let this message minister to the hearts and minds of those who need to be ministered by this message. Let my preaching and teaching be acceptable to you. We pray for that word of wisdom and knowledge. We ask this in the name of Yeshua, Messiah, to the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Baptism of John the Baptist. Let's take a look at John chapter 1 verses 25 through 26. This is out of the NSB. They asked him and said to him, verse 25, they asked him and said to him, Why then are you baptizing if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered them, saying, I baptize in water, but among you stands one whom you do not know. Uh, John was baptizing the remnant, the essence, a strict Mosaic, Mosaic sect of Judaism practiced baptism for purification, but normally only non-Jews were baptized when they converted to Judaism. When the Pharisees questioned John's authority to baptize, they were asking who gave John the right to treat God's chosen people like Gentiles. John said, I baptize in water. He was merely helping the people perform a symbolic act of repentance. But soon one would come who would truly forgive sin, something only the Son of God, the Messiah, could do. Baptism as a sign of repentance. Let's take a look at Matthew 3, 6. <clears throat> they were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins. When you wash dirty hands, the results are immediately visible, but repentance happens inside with a cleansing that isn't seen right away. 
So John used a symbolic action that people could see, baptism. The remnant, the Jewish remnant of the house of Judah used baptism to initiate converts. So John's audience was familiar with the rites. Here, baptism was used as a sign of repentance and forgiveness. Repentance means turn, implying a change in behavior. It is turning from sin towards God. It's a complete moral U-turn on the road of life. Having you, have you repented of your sins in your life? Can others see the difference it makes in you? A change of life with a new and different behavior makes your repentance real and visible. This is what it symbolizes. Let's take a look at Matthew 3.11. Matthew 3.11, for as for me, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, and I am not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit in fire. Matthew 3.11, John baptized people as a sign that they have had asked God to forgive their sins and had decided to live as he wanted them to live. Baptism was an outward sign of commitment to be effective it had to be accomplished by an inward change or attitude leading to a change of life. The work of the Holy Spirit. John said that Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit in fire. Let's look ahead to Pentecost, Acts 2, when the Holy Spirit would be sent by Jesus in the form of tongues of fire, empowering his followers to preach the gospel. John's statement also symbolizes the work of the Holy Spirit in bringing God's judgment <clears throat> upon anyone on those who refuse to repent. Everyone will one day, either now by God's Holy Spirit or later by the fire of His judgment. <clears throat> Mark 1.4 John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching baptism repentance for the forgiveness of sin. Mark 1.4 In John's ministry, baptism was a visual sign that a person had decided to change his or her life, giving up a sinful and selfish way of living and turning to God. John took known customs and gave it new meaning. The Jews often baptized non-Jews who had converted to Judaism. But to baptize a Jew as a sign of repentance was a radical departure from Jewish customs. The early church took baptism a step further associating with Jesus' death and resurrection. <clears throat> Romans 6, 3-4 or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death? And therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death. And so that as Christ was risen from the dead through the glory of the Father, so too we might walk in a new, uh, newness of life, for we have become united with him in the likeness of his death. Certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin, for he who had died 
For he who has died is free from sin. <clears throat> Peter 3.21 Corresponding to that, baptism now saves you, not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Peter says that Noah's salvation through water symbolizes baptism, a ceremony involving water. In baptism, we identify with Jesus Christ, who separates us from the, who separates us from the lost and gives us new life. It is not the ceremony that saves us, but faith in Christ's death and resurrection. Baptism is a symbol of the transformation that happens in the heart of those who believe. By identifying themselves with Christ through baptism, Peter, Peter's re readers could re resist turning back even under the pressure of persecution. Public baptism would keep them from the temptations to renounce their faith. Galatians 3.27 For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. <clears throat> Colossians 2.12 Colossians 2.12 Having been buried with, with him in baptism but you were also raised up with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. What water baptism symbolizes. Let's take a look at Romans chapter 6, 1 through 4. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin? And sin so that the grace may increase? No. May it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism and death, and so that, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. In the Church of Apostles' day, immersion was the usual form of baptism, that is, new Christians were completely buried in water, they understood this form of baptism to symbolize the death and burial of the old way of life. Coming up out of the water symbolizes resurrection to new life with Christ. If we think of our old sinful life as dead and buried, we have a powerful motive to resist sin. We can consciously choose to treat uh, desires and temptations of the old nature as if they were dead, then we can continue to enjoy our wonderful new life. Colossians 2, 11 through 12 Colossians 2, 11 through 12. And in him you were also circumcised 
with circumcised, made without hands in the removal of the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised up with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. In this passage, circumcision is related to baptism. Therefore, some see baptism as the New Testament sign of the covenant, identifying the person with the covenant community. Baptism parallels death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, and it also portrays the death and burial of our sins, uh, it, and it also portrays the death and burial of our old, old simple way of life follow, followed by resurrection to new life in Christ, remembering that our old sinful life is dead and buried with Christ. Buried with Christ gives us a powerful motive to resist sin, not wanting the desires of our past to come back to power again. We can consciously choose to treat our desires as if they were dead. Then we can continue to enjoy our wonderful new life in Christ. Why Jesus wanted to be baptized. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 3 verses 21 through 22. Now when all the people were baptized, Jesus was also baptized. And while he was praying, heaven was open. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him. Bali formed like a dove. And a voice came out of heaven. You are my beloved in you, I am well pleased. This is one of the several places in Scripture where all the members of the Trinity, Trinity are mentioned, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the traditional word of words of the church, the one God exists in three persons, but one substance, co-eternal, co-equal. No amount of explanation can adequately portray the power and intricacy of this unique relationship. There are no perfect analogies in nature because there is no other relationship like the Trinity. If baptism was a sign of repentance from sin, why did Jesus ask to be baptized? Several explanations are given. Jesus, number one, Jesus' baptism was one step in fulfilling his earthly mission of identifying with our humanity and sin. Two, by endorsing the rites of baptism, Jesus was giving us example to follow. Three, Jesus was announcing the beginning of his public ministry. Four, Jesus was being baptized for, for the sins of the nation, the Holy Spirit's Appearance in the form of the dove shows that God's plan for salvation was centered in Jesus. Jesus was the perfect human who did not, didn't need baptism for repentance, but he was baptizing, was baptized anyways on our behalf. how it identifies a believer with Christ. Let's take a look at Matthew twenty-eight nineteen. Go therefore and make disciples out of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit.
disciples were to be bat were to baptize people because baptism unites a believer with Christ, with Jesus Christ in his own or her death to sin and resurrection to new life. Baptism symbolizes submission to Christ and a willingness to live God's way and ident an identification with covenant people. And when we baptize, we are to baptize people in the name of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. Acts 2, 2, 38, And Peter said to them, Repent each of you, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Baptism to Greek to baptize. Number one, the application of water the application of water to a person as a sacrament or a religious ceremony by which he is initiated into the visible church of Christ. This is usually performed by immersion. Christian baptism, an ordinance immediately instituted by Christ, Matthew 28:19, Matthew 28:20, 20, and designed to be observed in the church like that of the supper till he comes. The word baptize, baptize and baptism are simple simply Greek words transferred into English. It means to dip a thing into an element, uh, uh, into an element or a liquid. In the Lexus, the Greek version of the Old Testament is used of the absolution and baptism required by the Mosaic, Mosaic law. These were affected by immersion and the same word washing. Hebrews 9.10, Hebrews 9.13, Hebrews 9.19, Hebrews 9.21, or baptism designated designates them all. Moreover, all of the instances of baptism recorded in Acts of the Apostles, Acts, 28, 38 to 41, Acts 8, 26 to 39, Acts 9, 17, Acts 9, 18, Acts 22, 12 through 16, Acts 10, 44 to 48, Acts 16, 32 to 34 suggests the idea that it was by dipping the person baptized by immersion. Baptism and the Lord's Supper are the two symbolic ordinances of the New Testament. The Supper represents the work of Christ and baptism the work of the Spirit. As in the Supper, a small amount of bread and wine used in this ordinance exhibit. exhibits and symbol the great work of Christ. So in baptism the work of the Holy Spirit is fully seen in the water in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost and in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. The apostle, apostles of our Lord were baptized with the Holy Ghost. Matthew 3.11 by his coming upon them. Acts 1 8, the fire also with which they were baptized set upon them. The extraordinary events of Pentecost was explained by P. 
Peter as a fulfillment of the ancient promise that the Spirit would be poured out in the last days. Acts 2.17, the last days, of course, being the period between Christ's ascension and return. He uses, he uses also, he uses also with the same reference the expression shed forth as a descriptive of the baptism of the Spirit, Acts 2.33. In the Pentecostal baptism, the apostles were not dipped into the Spirit or plunged in the Spirit, but the Spirit was shed forth, poured out, fell on them, Acts 11.15, came upon them, sat on them, the subject of baptism. This raises the question of greater importance than though the, the subject of baptism. This raises, raises questions of greater importance than those relating to its mode. The controversy here is not about believers' baptism, for that is common to all parties. Believers were baptized in the apostolic times, and they have <clears throat> been baptized in all times by all the branches of the church. <clears throat> it also... It, is altogether a misrepresentation to allege as is sometimes done by Baptists that their doctrine is believers baptism every instance of adult baptism or believers baptism Recorded in the New Testament, Acts 2.41, Acts 8.37, Acts 9.17, Acts 9.18, Acts 10.47, Acts 16.15, Acts 19.5 is just such as would be dealt with in precisely the same way by all branches of Protestant church a profession of faith or of their being believers would be required from every one of them before baptism. The point in dispute is not the baptism believers, but whether the, whether the infant ch children of believers but whether the infant children of believers of the mem of of members of the church ought to be baptized now i believe in infant baptism because infant baptism is a sign of the Infant baptism is a sign of circumcision in the Old Testament. And I express, you know, like sprinkling's okay when it comes to that. But the fact of the matter is this. When an infant grows up and becomes a child and recognizes and understands the profession of their faith, understands what it means, then they are to be baptized through full immersion. So, what is a sacrament? A sacrament is a holy ordinance instituted by Christ wherein by 
sensible sign Christ and the benefits of new covenant are represented, sealed, and applied to believers. What are the New Testament? What are the sacraments of New Testament? Sacraments of the New Testament are baptism and the Lord's Supper. What is baptism? Baptism is a sacrament wherein the washing with water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost does in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins signifies and seals our engrafting into Christ and partakers of the benefits of the covenant of grace and our engagement to be the Lord. To whom is baptism to be administered? To whom is baptism to be administered to? Baptism is not to be administered to any that are out of the visible church till they profess their faith and obedience to him. But the infants of such as are members of the visible church are to be baptized. Uh, sacraments are a holy sign and seal of the covenant of grace immediately instituted by God represents Christ and his benefits and to confirm our interest in him and our as also to put a visible difference between those that belong unto the church and those of the rest of the world and solely to engage them in the service of God and Christ according to his word. There is in every sacrament a spiritual relation or sacramental union between the sign and the thing signify, signified whence it comes to pass that the name and the effects of the one are attributed to others. The grace which is exhibited in or by the sacraments rightly used is not confirmed by any power in them, neither does the Efficiency of a sacrament dependent upon the pity or intention of him that the minister did, but upon the work of the Spirit and the word of and the word of institution, which contains which contains together with a precept authorizing the use of thereof, a promise of benefits to or their receivers. There be only two sacraments, ordinances by Christ our Lord in the gospel, that is to say baptism and the supper of the Lord, neither or, neither of which may be dis- First, dispensed by any, but by a minister of the word lawfully ordained. Baptism is a sacrament of the New Testament ordained by Jesus Christ not only for a solemn mission of the party baptized into the visible church but also to be 
upon him a sign and seal of the covenant of grace, of his engrafting into Christ, of regeneration, of remission of sin, and of his giving up unto God through Jesus Christ to walk in newness of life, which sacraments is by Christ's own appointment, uh, uh, which sacrament is by Christ's own appointment to be continued in his church until the end of the world. The outward element to be used in the sacrament is water, wherewith the party is to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost by a minister of the gospel lawfully called there unto, dipping of the person into the water is necessary. Not only those that do actually profess faith in and obedience unto Christ, but also the infant of one or both believing parents are to be baptized. Although it be a great sin to condemn or neglect this ordinance, yet grace and salvation are not so inseparably annexed unto it, as that no person can be regenerated or saved without it, or that all that are baptized are undoubtedly regenerated. The efficiency of baptism is not tied to that moment of time wherein it is ministry yet, notwithstanding by the right use of ordinances of the grace promised, uh, notwithstanding by the right use of this ordinance, the grace promised is not only offered, but really exhibit and confirm by the Holy Ghost to such whether or whether of age or infant, as that grace belongeth unto, according to the counsel of God's own will in his appointed time. The sacrament of baptism is but once to be ministered to any person. So, infants can be baptized through sprinkling because it is a sign of A sign, a sign of the covenant and like uh, circumcision. But when that infant reaches the age of accountability, understands what he professes and confesses, understands what it means to be baptized, should uh, be baptized through full immersion. In conclusion, is baptism necessary for salvation? 
Those who suppose baptism is necessary for salvation frequently cite Peter's, wor Peter's words in Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, as evident that belief plus baptism results in salvation. Scripture clearly, clearly does not support this view. First, as the book of Acts itself demonstrates, baptism is is a sign of conversion, not the means of conversion. Indeed, Acts 10.47 describes believers who were indwelt by the Holy Spirit and therefore saved, Romans 8.9, prior to being baptized. Moreover, when the thief on the cross placed his faith in Christ, Jesus said to him, Today you will be with me in paradise, Luke 23.43, even though the dying thief had no chance to be baptized. Furthermore, the Bible as a whole clearly communicates that we are saved by faith and not by works. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 through 9. As Paul points out in Romans, our righteous standing before God is by faith from first to last. Romans 1, 17. When the jeller, jeller asked the Apostle Paul, what must I do to be saved? Paul responded, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Acts 16, 30-31. Finally, although baptism is not the means by which we are saved, it is the means by which we are set apart. Through baptism, we testify that we are no longer our own. We have been bought by Christ's blood and have been brought into the community of faith. Thus, in Acts 2.38, Peter was not suggesting that his hearers could not be saved apart from baptism. Rather, he was saying that their genuine repentance would be evidenced by their baptism. As Saint Augustine taught, it is not the absence of baptism, but the despising of baptism that damns. Indeed, behind the symbols of baptism is the substance of baptism, the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses, which cleanses. Indeed, behind the symbol of, ba of baptism is the substance of baptism, the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses, cleanses from sin. As water cleanses the skin from soil and sweat, so the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses the soul from the stain of sin. Galatians chapter 3 verses 26 to 27. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. Close with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to hide these words in our hearts and minds and empower us to put into practice these truths. In Christ Jesus' name we pray through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God bless.